Thank you, Mayor Bradley, for your kind remarks concerning CSUM's contribution to the growth of the Los Angeles area. Twenty years is a relatively short span in the life of a university, but it is long enough to show direction and purpose. We invite all of our friends and neighbors to join with us in celebrating this, our 20th anniversary. We invite you to share a glimpse of the personalities and events that helped shape the brief but very busy history of this campus. According to our first dean, Del Oviatt, Father Sarah, back in 1760, moving northward through the San Fernando Valley, lunched at the present site of our bookstore, bust his own dishes, and moved on, the first commuter to this campus. Until the 1940s, the valley was fruit and vegetable farms, ranches for movie stars, a few automobiles. Thousands of servicemen and defense workers discovered California sunshine. With war's end, California population zoomed. The King sisters advised newcomers where to settle down. Make the San Fernando Valley my home. I'll forget my July 1, 1948, Los Angeles State College was established on the campus of Los Angeles City College. 1949, Dr. Howard McDonald appointed president. As LA State grew, it sought a site where it could establish its own identity. In 1953, Assemblyman Julian Beck introduced a resolution to bring a college to the valley. Because of the heated dispute over the location, President McDonald called a meeting with all Los Angeles County legislators. Vice President Warner Masters recalls the result. They adopted our proposal that Los Angeles have two colleges, one in the valley and the other in the central area. After fathering this campus, J. Beck moved to the bench, but remained this institution's staunchest friend and supporter. He was chairman of the president's advisory board for two decades. Retiring from the bench, he tendered this campus its greatest compliment by returning as a student. Alan Miller replaced Beck in the assembly and successfully led the fight that ensured a college for the valley. But where would it be located? The search began. Conflicts ensued. Pressures increased. Governor Goodwin Knight came to Northridge in early 1956. He recalls being advised by Earl Warren about his responsibility as chief executive. One of the things that he told me about was this. Gird yourself with strength in the decision about the site for the San Fernando State College. <laughs> The Northridge site, owned by the Halverson family, was selected and acquired. Diagonally across from the administration building is where our home used to be. The little house on the corner to which we came in 1924. September 1955, Del Oviatt, Education Division Chairman, was appointed Dean of the Valley Campus of Los Angeles State College. The memorial groundbreaking took place on January 4th, 
1956. This is a happy day for the members of the legislature representing the San Fernando Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, as we turn this soil in our beloved California, we do it with the wish and with the prayer. That Dignitaries attending manned the ceremonial shovel, later used in all groundbreaking for major construction on this campus. Construction of temporary buildings began in January 1956. The first building to be completed was the library. The Valley Campus officially opened September 24, 1956. Move up a little closer into our air-conditioned parking lot. A brave show of flag raising, a brief political speech, and students were off to the first classes. The cafeteria with bookstore next door was the center of campus activity. Fleming, Lawrence, and Williams of student activities soon had an active campus. Fraternities selected their sweethearts. Burge Hellicker's faculty staff band was the first musical group on campus. Faculty and students knew one another by name, and they all danced at the annual school picnic. On the average, the student body was older than the faculty. A grandmother was elected first Valley State Queen. The new president visits the campus for the first time in early 1958. I'm delighted now to have a switch of interests and start on the academic end of this building program with the library. You people want to build of San Fernando Valley State College, the best state college in the state of California, and I'm pleased to join you in that effort. On July 1, 1958, the campus became San Fernando Valley State College with ceremonies at the corner of Nordoff and Zelza. Del Oviatt rings an old-fashioned school bell, symbolizing class time at the Valley's own new college. The first permanent building was occupied March 1959. It is significant that our first temporary, our first permanent, and our most recent building was a library. In May 1959, Dr. Ralph Prater is inaugurated as first president of San Fernando Valley State College. A race began to keep ahead of rising enrollments. Faculty and staff had to be recruited and classrooms built. President Prater recalls that for several years, a new faculty member had to be hired each Monday and each Wednesday morning. Outstanding community leaders comprised the president's advisory board. Walker, Wiggins, and Wolfson came over the Tehachapi's with Dr. Prater. Wiggins chaired the music department. Wolfson and Walker later were vice presidents. Graduate Dean Ray Rydell became academic vice chancellor and later executive vice chancellor of the California State Colleges. During the decade 59 to 69, New buildings went up at the average rate of one a year. In 1960, San Fernando Valley State became a part of the newly established California State Colleges. In January 1965, Trustee Luckman and Chancellor Dumke joined President Prater to lay the cornerstone of the recently completed administration classroom building. The School of Engineering building was completed in 1965. An outstanding staff of service personnel was added to meet the needs of the rapidly expanding college. Our first groundsman, Carl Gasser, used to say, he liked to see things look nice. Every tree, bush, and shrub, and he planted many of them, received his personal attention. The campus attracted camera crews and stars of film and television to Northridge on location. Ending what he termed phase one of the college's development, President Prater stepped down in 1968 to become professor of education. 
Like other institutions in the late 60s, CSUN experienced campus unrest. As a result, there were several acting presidents until Dr. James W. Clary took charge in June of 1969. Under President Cleary, San Fernando Valley State College came of age. On June 1, 1972, it became California's State University, Northridge. Work began on phase one of the Del Mar T. Oviatt Library. Hazel Oviatt was the honored guest for its dedication in 1973. Each year, CSUN serves 30,000 students. 4,500 achieved bachelor's and master's degrees in 1978. Administration and faculty under the leadership of Dr. David Benson have developed a quality academic program. Faculty and students work together in a diversity of instructional settings. California State University Northridge has achieved increasing national recognition for excellence in teaching and research. CSUN faculty distinguish themselves with statewide awards for teaching. Research projects enrich the experience of faculty and students. For example, the National Cancer Institute awarded one half million dollars for research on cell adhesion and cancer cell spread. Students actively participate in the research and co-author publications in recognized scientific journals. The Aerospace Corporation presented one of the world's finest solar observatories to CSUN. It will make a major contribution to NASA's Solar Maximum Mission in 1979-80. The School of Engineering received a grant for its unique career facilitation project for women. The lives of 600 orphans near Mexico City were brightened by a CSUN class applying solar energy technology to needs of the orphanage. The Bureau of Business Services and Research serves as a resource for the business community. The Destination 90 program in urban studies involved faculty, students, and community leaders in planning the future of the San Fernando Valley. Funds from the National Science Foundation enabled CSUN faculty to work with public school teachers in their classrooms and on the campus studying multiculturalism. The Office of Education is supporting a joint project with the Los Angeles City Schools to develop an innovative teacher center in the San Fernando Valley. The Department of Home Economics conducted a federally sponsored study to facilitate entrance of handicapped youngsters into preschools. A grant from Los Angeles County Department of Senior Citizens Affairs is for planning improved health care for the elderly. CSUN's Geography Department is one of the best equipped for instruction. The state commissioned CSUN to publish an atlas of California water resources. Several hundred faculty have participated in programs coordinated by CSUN's Institute for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning since its inception in 1975. The National Endowment for the Humanities funded a five-year project to revitalize the liberal arts curriculum. This is the largest grant of its kind made to a state university. The visual and performing arts illustrate CSUN's emphasis on excellence in all aspects of campus life. The teenage drama workshop started in a tent back in 1956 and has become a valley institution. The Theater for Children program has achieved national recognition. Many graduates have careers in professional theater. Graduates in music perform with major symphony orchestras both at home and abroad. Students have won auditions with the Metropolitan and the San Francisco Opera. Musical education for Valley Youth is enriched by the Music for Youth and Orchestral Academy programs. Noted composers are faculty members here. CSUN regularly hosts visiting artists such as Segovia and Copeland. Students are the life of the university. Student activity fees support a wide range of student programs and services. Federal grant assistance made possible the new student health center. Activity fees built the new university student union. There is an active program of social and cultural events organized by the students.
1967, the university moved northward. Rincon Hall, now called University Tower Apartments, was completed. Devonshire Downs became a part of the campus and the new home of the fighting matadors. In NCAA's Division II, CSUN's athletic program is ranked number one in the entire United States. In all, the Matadors have won 11 national championships in six sports. State University Northridge offers a comprehensive range of programs, services, and activities for campus and community. The Office of Special Services provides for learners with special needs. This includes veteran and handicapped students. The Educational Opportunity Program has provided financial assistance and tutorial support for 1,800 low-income students each year. The Financial Aids Office provides assistance exceeding $6 million in federal and state grants to some 4,000 students annually. CSUN has a long-standing commitment in meeting the needs of the handicapped. Many physically disabled students have increased their mobility through adaptive physical education. The National Center on Deafness is world-renowned for the number and quality of its graduates. All special students participate in the regular academic program. Their achievements have been significant. There is one graduate here through whom I should like to pay tribute to the entire graduating class. This graduate is Rod McDonald, who is both deaf and blind, and who today is taking his master's degree in the National Leadership Training Program for the deaf blind. Earlier this year, he testified before two congressional committees. His testimony stirred the minds and hearts of the committee members. And because his appearance was covered by national television news media, his words of strong support for equality of educational opportunity among the handicapped opened the minds of millions of TV viewers across the country. Community leaders, community groups, our friends and neighbors of the San Fernando Valley actively support and participate in the life of this campus. We are proud of the progress this institution has made the past 20 years. We have even greater hopes and dreams for the future.